uh, I ask uh, everyone except of uh, the speaker and the host to mute themselves. And if you want to ask a question, uh, it's better to send it uh, in the chat to everyone, so in the appropriate Moment. Oh, no, actually, I prefer to just unmute and ask directly. Ah, okay, great. Yeah. So, you, you're, you, you're the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so yeah. A, a, anyway, let, let's start. So, we are happy to have Maxim Kansevich from IHS. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, who will speak on higher critical points, points and calculus of variations. Yeah, yeah. So, from now on, you, you'll stop to see me and I will stop to see you because I'll share screen. Okay. So please make noises sometimes so we can see if you are live. Okay. Okay. Just a second. Okay. So you see my screen, I hope. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Jan. Yes. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you oops, hear me? I don't hear you at all. Uh, it's bad. Uh, oops. I'm uh, something okay something is not Jan, yes i don't hear you uh, uh lena do you hear me yes i hear you i don't hear uh, anybody uh okay maxim it's your okay uh let me see maxim hmm? uh, i don't hear anybody uh Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, but I don't hear you at, at all. Uh, this means, uh, Lena, what about the settings? Ah, but if okay, you so, so it will be very dangerous talk, so we'll have no back reaction. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah so, yeah, so we'll talk uh, about uh, uh, something related to Noether theorem. And in fact, I gave uh, this talk about a year and a half ago in uh, Institute Henri Poincaré in Paris. And it was 100th anniversary of Noether theorem. But this talk was um, a kind of ephemeral event. So I gave a talk, and I'm not going to write it. And this wasn't recorded, and now probably with it the possibility to record it. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's about the following. Uh, suppose you have function of one variable, yeah? X of t, where t is a real number. And uh, now you have uh, some, uh, you write L of X of t, X dot of t, t. You get some Lagrangian depending on time uh, and it will be action functional. Uh, then we can write equation of motion in this earlier Lagrange equation. Let me just try to do it a bit better. Equation. Uh, and um, Kind of classical fact for mechanics that on the space of solutions, uh, which is usually two dimensional space in this situation, we have canonical close to form. Yeah, so uh, this function could be with values in R or could be values x of t, could be, in fact, it uh, could be several functions and typically if it's n functions the space of solution has dimension to n and you get this close to form uh, it's uh, basics of classical mechanics uh, and there is a kind of generalization of this fact uh, less known mm, i think it's uh, maybe ostrogratsky who discovered it uh, it's a pretty complicated formula this same is true If uh, Lagrangian depends on 
several derivatives. Mm, okay, and also we get close to form. And the formal is pretty complicated, and uh, I, I don't remember it by heart. So how to understand this uh, fact? Uh, and explanation is the following. Yeah, I just uh, recall that on as previous in the Stokowski formula, we, we make derivative. So it looks that we speak about some C infinity functions and several derivatives. But in fact, it's not about several derivative, it's, it's a kind of fact of maybe discrete geometry. So there is a discrete version of the whole story, which in fact, it's much more clear. Uh, so instead of time, continuous time, we'll speak about uh, discrete time. So instead of continuous time, we have discrete time. Maybe I denote by something like i or n. Some in, in, it will be integer. And um, now for, for each i, I suppose I have certain manifold. Xi, uh, it will be like values of my um, manifold whereby my values of my function take, uh, take place. And suppose I get certain uh, 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 replace, oh, just a second, we replace the space of functions by product over, over i of these manifolds. Mm. And uh, now we replace Lagrangian By certain function, uh, but uh, it depends on time t. Now it will be depend on discrete parameters. So it will be a function of x i, x i plus one, maybe x i minus one, some few uh, uh, function depending on uh, maybe x i plus k, the k is less some constant. So it will be discrete analog of function depending on finitely many derivatives. Oh, just a second. I, I should I feel very uncomfortable not to hear you at all? Maybe I just change my. Uh, uh, okay, you still don't uh, hear me. Headphones and to see what's, what's going on. Okay. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, please try to make some noise. Okay, do you hear me? No, it looks like... It's our story. Uh, the, yeah, uh, okay. Or maybe if it's okay, I just... Uh, I try to maybe kind of answer... Check out and check in again. Uh-huh. Okay. So I really don't feel comfortable without any big reaction. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yes, yes, yes. so no, you, at least you heard all the story about Stragratsky, blah, 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 yeah. Yes, that. yes, at least, and at least we could read it, so. Yeah. Okay, maybe I'll, when I no? put the no, notes, no. I will correct my handwriting, which is... Yeah, difficult. okay, good. Okay, so I get this Lagrangian, and um, so the analog of functional, analog of uh, action functional, S, S of this uh, kind of Xi and Z, will be sum over i of these local terms, yeah? It's analog of integral to be in a kind of big uh, infinite sum. Yeah, first of all, I just want to kind of notice like in finite dimensional case, it is not actually a functional on infinite uh, on configurations because the sum is divergent. If you stay in a finite volume, it's okay, but it's an infinite volume, it makes no sense. It's just divergent thing. Okay? Well, Jan, do you hear me? Yes, okay. So I will, I will unmute and so I will say, okay, good. I you will make, make some noises. noises. Yeah, because, yeah, okay. because, so. because, yeah, because it's. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. 
it's not a function, but uh, equation of motion still makes sense, yeah, because it's uh, mm -hmm. uh, makes sense. And then we can speak about space of solutions in infinite time, infinite time, which is now Z. And uh, so the uh, uh, kind of claim that it's uh, it also has symplectic has two form close to form on space of solutions. And what will be the formula for this uh, close to form? I'll just give you the following thing. So we get this space, uh, I don't know, like, I'm kind of like space of pass, which will be product of all xi over i over z. It's infinite dimensional manifold, yeah? Mm -hmm. Infinite dimensional manifold. It's a product. And now consider forms on this on this infinite dimensional manifold. Because it's a product, I claim that the RAM differential, it's kind of sum of the RAM differential uh, uh, along the, the factors. Because this space of forms is a product of algebra forms on xi, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then because it's a, it has a product of complexes, differential sum of, of complexes, of differential complexes. So you see you have many diff commuting differentials, infinitely many commuting differentials. And then for any function f from z to, let's say, real numbers, we define df will be sum over f of i di. Uh, so we got, uh, so this di will be d of kind of delta i. We can make arbitrary linear combinations. Okay. Now, what will be the formula? Now consider function f. Formula f. for what? For two form, for the two mm -hmm. form. Pick f such that f is equal to zero, f, okay, f of i is equal to zero for i mm, uh, close to minus infinity equal to one for i close to plus infinity. So we get some kind of discrete version of a, mm, some step function. I can see the arbitrary function f. Now apply df to s, and then apply d, which is d of maybe function that is identically equal to one. Uh, the claim that is this expression, uh, because s is a sum of local terms, uh, makes sense. It's a finite sum. Obviously, it's closed because we apply differential to something, yeah. And the, and the, uh, uh, where is the fact if if we restrict the space of solutions, it doesn't depend on the choice of f because two different choices differ by uh, something with a compact support. Two choices. By the way, Maxim, we do not see well when you write on this line. Uh, 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 to, 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 to build, it's too, too, way strange. You see my screen? No, I, uh, I, I, I do. Uh, so you do? Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. My, yeah. my, best my screen, yeah. yeah. Check, check your... Yeah. Mm. If you have two choices, then F minus prom is has have finite support and D1 DF minus F prime S is equal to df minus f prime d1s, and d1s is zero, so you get kind of zero okay, on, on space of solutions. Now, so it's a very easy calculation, which shows that uh, this thing is well defined, and uh, you get close to one form, cl close to form. Yeah, uh, kind of uh, easiest example. Suppose with uh, my action is the sum of kind of li of this two neighbors, get like infinite sum. It's not a statistical expression, yeah, but uh, uh, it's analog of Lagrangian depending on two neighbors or on first derivative. And then uh, one can choose uh, the function equal to zero 
up to some point and one up to another point to the your function. And when and when I calculate this d1 df of s, it will be uh, it it will be kind of like second derivative dxi. Maybe just write d in variable xi d variable xi plus one some i zero of uh, l i zero. Okay, so 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 you get this expression. It's second derivative. You get function on a product of two manifolds, and one can make uh, differential one directions and differential in another direction. You get two form, close to form. And this is two form restricting the space of solution of Euler Lagrange equation. Does depends on a, i zero. Yeah, so that um, makes this um, completely clear that this. Uh, Things can extend between uh, this uh, local um, terms and uh, kind of Lagrangian depend not on two neighbors but on arbitrary many neighbors. And then, if you go to continuous limit for C infinity functions, you, then you can presumably get this is Stratigraphic formula for two mm, uh, for two form for, for close to form. Yeah. So you, you see that here uh, the time is not really a continuous manifold. It's um, it's like integers, and uh, we inter we're interested in some kind of notion of integers not very far from each other, and it mm, belongs to the uh, subject called coarse geometry. So it's not really a topological space, but it has something, it has some topology on large distances. Uh, one can try to put, uh, uh, to see what is the origin of this function is equal to zero on one end and one to another end. Uh, again, if you kind of I think it might be in C infinity terms. Uh, this function is gives uh, something like element in first cohomology with compact support of time, um, which is in course geometry, of course, discrete set. But if you uh, kind of connect things, uh, um, uh, discrete values of time by intervals. And make a make nerve, then we get something homotopic equivalent to R, but all just compact support will be one dimensional. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I hope it's clear up to now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Could you yeah. please explain that calculation again? I couldn't read what the dx i zero i plus one zero. D, dx i zero plus one of, of l i zero. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry, thank you. Okay, yeah. Okay, just for any i0, you get you get form depending on i0, but restriction on the solution doesn't depend. Yeah, yeah. in fact, it was uh, discovered, uh, it's not really a new formula, but it's not 100 years old formula. It's uh, maybe something from 20 years ago. Uh, this discrete analog of mechanics was uh, discovered very, very late. Who, what is who, the reference? Who, who was? Uh, yeah, in fact, I think I was the first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was something like 30 years ago I came to this idea, but then I talked to various people like, like Novikov or Nord, so it was new for them. And then uh, when I last year I gave a talk, uh, there was somebody who gave me some reference, but it's not, not what in this general form, in some kind of special cases. But it all, all, all this works for discrete. Time mechanics was very, very late. Yeah, I'm, I'm very really surprised. Something like 15 years ago, maybe first papers appeared. Mm, okay. Now, so, uh, uh, and here one can make some little generalization. Uh, one can imagine that uh, your time is not z, but uh, let's say some graph with three. Legs it goes to infinity, yeah, and then for each vertex of um, e, for each vertex of the graph, you get some manifold xi, you get some c infinity manifold, you get a product of these guys, and take some of our uh, local terms, this will be the action, and you can consider solution of Euler Lagrange equation on this uh, geometry which has no analog on smooth case because. Uh, the vertex is something like singular point, but uh, in discrete um, 
uh, terms, it uh, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, then get space of solutions of early Lagrange equation. And and here get close to forms, but close to forms depend on H1 with compact support of um, this chisponic nerve, maybe of this guy. So it will be two dimensional space. So the structure of the graph, is it important? Yeah, no, it's whatever, but uh, it's essentially if you have, um, I don't know, something called locally finite graph, mm -hmm. uh, then. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You could make a nerve uh, and then take com first cohomology with compact support. And so here, uh, for example, in this situation, you get not one to form, close to form, but two to uh, kind of pencil of two forms. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So it's, it's a very easy uh, generalization, which has no, no direct C infinity analog. And then, uh, yeah. So it's kind of like discrete version of Noether's theorem. And uh, one can also make. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. So what, what is about Mercer theorem? Mercer theorem. Yeah, Mercer theorem says the following. Actually, there are two theorems. If uh, one ha one has a vector field, and I'll speak. Uh, uh, really in these discrete terms on this infinite dimensional guy, uh, said that uh, uh, it's given by a local expression. Xi is a certain expression of X, let's say, some like, two, two neighbors of few neighbors, yeah? Mm. Uh, so you get vector field, which formally preserves the action functional Uh, then uh, the claim that you'll get a, um, a certain uh, first integral. You get a function on the space of solutions. In space of solutions of a Lagrange equation. Uh, and if this vector field forms some Lie algebra, then uh, this functions. Um, mm, Ah, function uh, function su such that uh, it's it is preserved uh, it's preserved by uh, corresponding vector field in space of solutions. By vector field, so you get conservation law. Uh, 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 ah, and function you can cal calculate at any um, kind of. Um, moment of time and it will be the same it will be kind of conservation law and and the way to do it is the following how to uh, uh, make uh, make the definition if you had so so my vector field is some kind of infinite sum of vector fields that uh, at each point, yeah. Mm -hmm. I take variation of each uh, coordinate xi, which factor of coordinates xi, which will be certain function of the product. Uh, and uh, the whole variation is given by certain sum. A again, you see they get sum of integers. And then we can make ff, v depending on function f, it will be weighted sum of this uh, integers, of these derivatives. And now again, you choose Function which is equal to zero at one end and f uh, one in another end and consider derivative with respect to this in vector field infinite manifold of the action functional and so it's called maybe kind of h v f and the claim uh, the restriction is you get certain function on uh, on all mm, configuration space but restriction to uh, to space of solutions of Euler Lagrange equation doesn't depend on mm, on uh, choice of f. By this. Uh, again, because the difference will be something again compact and you get finite sums, and uh, because it's critical points, the derivative will be zero on space of solutions. Okay, so that's explanation how. Uh, mm, 
conservation laws appears from uh, infinitesimal symmetries. Uh, and these symmetries could be not necessarily integrated to group action because uh, you see that uh, it's uh, something like depend in, um, on two neighbors and uh, in continuous case, it will be something depending on maybe on high derivatives. And when you integrate in finite time, it will get some kind of integral, not, not local expression at all. So vector fields should be local, but flows is not um, positive. Sorry, one question. Uh, so your yeah. xi dot, uh, does it necessarily depend on things in that form, or this is only exactly? Oh, it could be several x minus 2. Okay, okay, okay sure. You could have sort of a finite sum. So it's really coarse geometry, uh, some, some kind of finite neighborhood. neighborhood and, uh, and, uh, I don't care. Yeah, so we get this first neutral theorem, which very easily explained without any calculation uh, in these derivatives and so on. Uh, it's, um, I think it's really the best explanation. Mm. And there is second neutral theorem. Uh, second neutral theorem. Um, if uh, this uh, symmetry V depends on some functional parameter. It's not like uh, there are uh, kind of symmetries in mechanics are of two types. There are uh, like time translation or space translation uh, and the parameter translations, every, it's the same, every, it's every point of space time or, or, or rotation, it's kind of the same rotation. But the uh, uh, gauge symmetry, the things depends on some function, arbitrary function like in the gauge group. And symmetry depends on uh, on, on functions, so you get something like soft shift. Uh, then then the, this, uh, this integral, this conservation law is zero, which is completely clear from the, from the definition because um, if it's really soft and you make calculation, then you can make it kind of find it support, uh, find it support and then you don't see this um, things equal to one in one direction or equal to zero one direction. And moreover, uh, the things, uh, there is, uh, one can add something more in, in this kind of for gauge symmetries. Uh, one get a, a non-trivial kernel of two form. This two form will be automatically degenerate by similar reasons. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, so kind of explain you this re results of nurture, which was some some kind of calculation. Here, there's really no calculation. Mm. Let me do just two examples. Uh, suppose my uh, I consider functions uh, on um, the following things. My uh, I consider R times compact surface. So the first cohomology with compact support is still one dimensional, yeah. So I get non-compact uh, manifold mm. and consider S action, uh, it will be chern simon section. Uh, yeah, so for example, uh, uh, what does it mean? I consider, uh, you get this my manifold M and my fields will be element, well, let's say, by some matrices, I don't know, some JLN. And JLN another. Get A, it will be, it will be my, my field. And the action will be integral of trace, whatever, A, D, A over two plus A, will be equal to three, as a section. And this is a uh, gauge invariant, at least, uh, form allegation variant. Mm. Now we can consider what's a solution of Euler-Lagrange equations. Solution of Euler-Lagrange equations are the same as flat, collection, flat connections. So dA plus A squared equal to zero. We get flat connections uh, and uh, on uh, this manifold, which is kind of like surface multiplied by R, uh, surface by R. And if you try to, uh, but the kernel of, uh, I, I don't mm, divide here by gauge equivalence at all. 
and when considered kernel of omega, it will be infinitesimal gauge transformations. Connecting connections. And so you see that omega is pullback of two form on space of solution of earlier Lagrange equation modular gauge equivalence, at least connected component of gauge equivalence, uh, which is um, finite dimensional spaces will be representation of fundamental group of the surface to the group JLN up to conjugation. Yeah, so it gives you explanation. Um, this to form in this case, it's very, very degenerate. So it's a caution to get finite, uh, if modeled by kernel, get finite dimensional space. Yeah, oh, by the way, I just want to say that it's uh, here, you see that before I was speaking, my manifold was R, but um, because of this picture with uh, compact support should be R multiplied by compact space time, space. So, so time will be infinite, but space will be kind of compact. And that's how the symplectic form appears also in the high dimensional variation of calculus. And uh, a similar example is uh, gravity theory. So uh, the action is, so the, uh, we have again some manifold of any dimension. Let's see, D, dimension D. Uh, and the field will be metric. And the action will be integral of uh, rich cur uh, scalar curvature. Or in fact, any invariant expression you want to like. The whole thing, it's, then the thing is invariant under diffeomorphisms. That's uh, general relativity. So you get invariants under diffeomorphisms. And now if my manifold is, it could be actually non-compact, it could be some kind of maybe small interval multiplied by some compact d minus one dimensional uh, n. Uh, the main thing is I, I put it non-compact manifold that does have boundary. And because of, of this open interval, it has no trivial H1 with commodity with compact support. It will be R. And then you get mm. uh, some close to form on uh, whatever Ricci flat matrix, for example, on, on this uh, small color around N D minus one. And then you, on this space of uh, uh, rich metric, you get Foliation by uh, uh, infinitesimally given on space of solutions, you get foliations. You get a foliation uh, uh, given by um, uh, um, vector fields action. Uh, and uh, and then uh, the symplectic form vanishes on 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 this along this foliation. It will be non-degenerate on a, on a on a quotient, and that's um, how to describe a kind of symplectic manifold, whatever, or stack associated to, um, to the gravity theory. Again, so physicists uh, write some complicated formulas. Uh, it's, yeah, so it's not exactly a cotangent bundle, uh, it's, it's more because you take a quotient, uh, but it's again um, kind of obvious explanation why you have some symplectic structure. Okay, so now I'll finish my story about two forms and uh, I want to hear some noise from you. So what kind of noise? Mm -hmm. uh, is it everything clear or ask questions? Uh, no, it can be a singular. Uh, yes, yes, a form could have different rank and so on. Yeah, of course it's, yeah, actually the main, also, it's important point here. It's not a Poisson structure. So, in kind of mechanics, mechanics without symmetries, uh, Poisson structures coming from like Lie groups. Uh, and for this variation calculus, you see two forms, not Poisson structure. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I can consider. Uh, so the question is, uh, can one so go to? If I could ask a very naive question. Yes, uh, yes, everybody can ask me. I, I was uh, kind of lost. Could you make the connection again between the discrete story and then suddenly the 
two examples? Uh, or maybe uh, yeah. Uh, it's not discrete story. No, discrete story is for kind of easy explanation of Nutter's theorem, nothing else. Ah, okay. So this is a new section. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's kind of a continuous. In continuous story, I just want to exp explain uh, that this two form when you have gauge symmetries is highly degenerate. Right. That's okay. it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, the question. Uh, can one go replace close two form by close three form? Yeah, so if you read physics literature, people uh, can physics, in fact, are um, uh, uh, working such questions, uh, uh, they're secretly algebraists. And, phys and physicists uh, also thought how to generalize notion of symmetries and can then go from two form to three forms and from Lie algebras to high Lie algebras. Yeah, so there, there are plenty of attempts to do it. And I also thought, uh, is it something special about uh, uh, two and three? Because what happens here, we get first cohomology of com with compact support gives you two form, yeah? And two is probably one plus one. Yeah? Can we can explore this? Uh, in kind of raise uh, degrees in this question. And the answer is yes, but it's really mm, bizarre uh, mm, situation. Yeah, so we, uh, uh, let's return back to chern simon theory. Yeah? Uh, in three dimensions, chern simons uh, can be written the following thing. Is if I have my three dimension manifold, suppose I have compact three dimension manifold, and represent this manifold as a bundle of four-dimensional manifold, yeah? Then the chern simon section can be written as the following. You uh, extend uh, one form matrix one form alpha, maybe one form times some JLN, to one form alpha tilde in, on a four-dimensional manifold. And then now we can take integra integral of trace of curvature of this tilde squared, so like second chain class of four dimensional manifold. And uh, again, if you do it in trivial bundle, you can integrate by parts and reduce the integral to the bundle, you get chain Simon section. So chain Simon section is um, avatar of second chain class. But now we can repeat the situation in high dimensions. So let's do five dimensional manifold. And uh, when right is a bundle of six dimension manifold, we can integrate trace of curvature cube, yeah? And then it will be integral again, some kind of like five dimensional chain Simons over M5. Some complicated expression A and DA. Something like A, D, A, D, A, plus some whatever. Get such, such expression here. Okay, so we get, uh, um, such thing. And now imagine that my five dimension manifold is product of R2 uh, times, uh, I need some another letter, some three dimension, compact three dimension manifold. Uh, when, when it's product of R2 and compact three dimension manifold, then we have situation when H2 is compact support of M5 is in R, yeah. Uh, you, you have this uh, non-trivial second cohomology with compact support. And now, uh, like, again, I just briefly go to discrete language. We replace R2 by Z2. Uh, you, can, you can have two functions, like function F1, and function F2, equal to 0 and 1, 1 infinity to, to infinity. And one can write expression like this. Yeah, that's a uh, uh, naive generalization of what I wrote in the case of um, uh, kind of fun uh, uh, time direction, uh, which associated a uh, product of two, two classes and you get some cl generator of H2 with compact support of, of your thing. Yeah, so we get this formula. You can restrict the space of solution. 
So we get this uh, uh, three form, we get closed three form, respect to species of solutions. And uh, this guy depends on the choice of representative. It's not uh, this, it's not uh, because this three form, I, it was depending on choice of two functions and, uh, and two, two half planes, I can shift it. It does depend, it depends on uh, representatives. But uh, observation is the following. We consider this closed to form restricted, not a space of solutions. And solutions what? It means that you solve equations, yeah? The S equal to zero, yeah? But now you should solve kind of overdetermined system equation. We consider doubly critical point. Things which usually don't exist. When I get fu functions somewhere, it's critical points are usually zero dimensional cells, but double critical points, it's a highly overdetermined system, it seems do not exist in general. And the claim, this close to form is, is canonical. Uh, it does depend on choices representative. And let's try to see what, uh, what is the meaning of double uh, doubly critical points in the situation. So my action is when I consider derivative of my uh, uh, first derivative from action, it will be integral of trace of um, dA times F squared. I get one form times four form. And equation of motion means that F square is zero as matrix valued, uh, valued for form on my five dimension manifold, uh, which is uh, kind of looks um, uh, really kind of no, uh, normally determined system because uh, five form has five uh, coefficients. So get something like five functions with values of matrices on manifold and connections also five functions. So get roughly the same number of connection, uh, equations and variables. But now we consider what a second derivative. It's will be trace of A. And then you get mm, variation of F times F. And variation of F, what is it? It's D of variation of DA plus DAA, something like this. So you get some uh, quadratic expression. And you see from the things that D square of S vanishes if and only if, if, if curve is equal to zero. So the equation for doubly mm. critical point in this five dimensional situation is a flat connections. And, uh, mm, and now the things works com completely perfectly. Now, if, if I have my R2 times compact L3, if I have this non-compact manifold, then consider the space of flat connections on this manifold. You get claim you get close reform, and I explain this reform in a second. This reform will be again very, very degenerate. It's like a neutral serum, it has huge kernel. In fact, it is pulled back from space of flat connections. Modular gauge equivalence, which is the same as the representation of fundamental group of my three dimensional manifold to some JLN, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so this space representation of fundamental group of three dimensional manifold typically should be zero dimensional. But again, uh, it's a question of uh, algebraic geometry of integer numbers because it's solution of some system for equations of integer numbers, and sometimes it, the, this guy has some accidentally high dimension. Yeah, for example, if consider represent just JL1 and if fundamental group is large, then we get a torus, certain dimension. And why you get here three form, it's absolutely obvious because if you have any uh, local system, E, then the tangent space to local system will be X1 in space of local system. 
then we get kind of cup product. Goes to X3. And then by Poincare duality, you get a trace. Yeah, so we got uh, three form on the space of um, mm, uh, this uh, mm, local system of three dimensional manifolds, which is uh, coming this for five dimensional picture. Yeah, so the whole thing it's now became completely uniform. So the general situation, if you get certain action uh, and consider General means in any dimension. In any dimension, dimension, yeah, yeah. Suppose you get you, you get kind of class of whatever H K with compact support of space time is equal is uh, you get some non-trivial class of homology with compact support. It maps to um, kind of K plus one of closed form on the space of uh, solutions of um, over the uh, high critical points. Uh, for k equal one, you get first derivative, you get two form, and here you get up to maybe k derivative of s equal to zero. And, and, and then if you consider Chern Simons in dimension two k plus one, and your manifold will be r k k times a compact l k plus one di dimensional space, you get h, h k compact support of m s r, and we get k form, close k four, k plus one form on on flat connections on k plus one dimension manifolds. Yeah, so it's, it's um, uh, kind of concrete example. One can try to think that it's very, very special example, uh, uh, how we can meet other situation in mathematics when you have had, um, could have non-trivial uh, high critical points, horribly overdetermined system. Uh, here in, uh, in topology, we have a situation because it's equations of integer numbers and then accidentally have more, uh, more solutions than expect naively. Uh, but uh, this, in fact, uh, same reasoning goes to uh, another situation which I didn't explore. Uh, you see that uh, this chain assignment section has a kind of ultra dramatic analog. You can see the holomorphic chain assignment section. So you can see the, your, your manifold will be now maybe non-compact Calabio manifold and you integrate this, this holomorphic form, this expression of Shannon Simons in D-bar direction. And then critical points will be holomorphic bundles. And then holomorphic bundles, uh, if your variety is algebraic, can have much larger dimensions than you expect um, naively from earlier PTC population or uh, kind of in high dimensions, uh, the complex are too long and you shouldn't expect these things at all, but uh, in the red geometry, they still exist. Okay, yeah, so, uh, so there is a room to, to generalize this example. But now I'll return to mm, this uh, topological chain Simons. There was uh, something which is, um, mm, there was some kind of parallel story and actually I gave a talk to you yes, two days ago on something which was, contains this part of the story. Uh, let's return to three-dimensional chain assignments. Uh, you have uh, critical values of, critical values of this chain assignment section are elements in C, yeah? Or one can mod out by two pi square. When I apply the large gauge transformation, you have ambiguity by integer multiple of two pi square. And you get countable, countable subgroup. for various three manifolds, for various groups uh, in C mod two pi square. In this countable subgroup, actually it's very nice thing, it's called a K3 decomposable of C. It's some part of K3 of C over Q bar. 
which maps to this uh, SIMA group by a square z, and the map is called a regulator map. A conjecture, Sim. What? Conjecture uh, what? The quality is a conjecture, rigidity conjecture. Ah, conjecture, okay, good. Rigidity conjecture, good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so you get this, uh, this map, Mm, and uh, and uh, this group, this group is kind of uh, ration, uh, up to torsion is rational um, uh, vector space of rational numbers of infinite rank, and roughly it's like q bar divided by q bar intercept plus r uh, by Borel theorem. So it has uh, kind of meaning of um, not real extensions of q, real extensions of q. Uh, trivial regulator map. Mm, now, so get this uh, this thing, and it has uh, different descriptions. Uh, 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 and another description is the following: it's actually completely finite dimensional. You can see the torus of certain finite torus of certain dimension uh, with some coordinates z1, zm. You can see the arbitrary monomials, and consider some finite combination of some of of dialogue dialogues of monomials and maybe get some quadratic expression logarithms with c gamma i integers and i j also integers so consider such function phi it's multi-valued function and now consider critical values of phi And the claim that the space of critical values up to maybe some torsion part is the same as uh, image of the regulator. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so we get two situations. We get finite dimensional situation, infinite dimensional situation with kind of the same critical values. Now consider this five dimension Chern Simons. Then uh, Critic, uh, then this uh, values of values of five dimension ch uh, chain on flat connections are certain sums of three logarithms, but uh, again, kind of very special sums of three logarithms, and the, the size of this group will be the same, like half of q bar. You mean linear combinations? Yeah. What, what are linear combinations of three logarithms? Yeah, and then there was this conjecture made by Don Zagir many years ago when he tried to see what a linear combinations one should do. And uh, the, uh, the claim is the following. You now consider linear combinations of serialogram plus maybe some expression in dialogues and, lo and logs and maybe triple of logs, yeah. Analog of stuff. You consider such things, and now consider points when first derivative equal to zero and second derivative equal to zero. Mm, these are again uh, finite dimensional, but again overdetermined systems. Mm. And uh, if you try to interpret it algebraically, it leads uh, leads to something because when you write the first derivative. Uh, you write the sum of dialog, dialogues should be equal, uh, let's ignore the high terms, dialogues multiplied by differential of logs is equal to zero, yeah? It's equation for um, first derivative because derivative of three logarithms in logarithm will be one minus variable times dialogarithm. But when you take second derivative, you get again uh, uh, Li1, which is log, you get log, d log, d log, uh, d log, Maybe kind of symmetric, not tensor, like like, like symmetric times times the uh, tense log, and this is um, so you get um, for second derivative you get uh, this expression which you can translate to something in a general algebraic expression, and it's part of certain complexes. I don't really remember them, but uh, when I look at this, it it fits perfectly well. So this all conjectures of uh, the gear. Uh, can be formulated in kind of very bizarre forms that if you go to higher k theory, you should consider high values, high, high critical values. Uh, 
So is it, so I'm, I'm confused, is it what? It's a conjecture modular conjecture of the gear or what? Yeah, then maybe you should ask Sasha for what is conjecture, what Sasha. is not conjecture. Uh, maybe we'll... the question. Huh? No, no, I mean, uh, the conjecture, uh, you have the image of the higher regulator and you have higher churn Simon. So, uh, Maxim, it look, I understand that he, Maxim says that the image of the regulator is the critical values of higher churn Simons. Higher critical values of higher Higher critical values on higher critical points. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yes. Yeah, and, and uh, but the claim that all these complexes which appear in case theory and um, uh, attempt to write what linear combination of three logarithm appears as um, values of regulator, uh, they are naturally interpreted as a, uh, equations for high critical point. Which so is say, say it again. Uh, the equations for, uh, um, for, um, when we try to predict algebraically what linear combination of three logarithms appears in the yeah. values of uh, regulator, mm -hmm. uh, so it kind of fits exactly to this condition of uh, high critical point. Mm. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so we have kind of really very interesting situation. So we get, uh, so what we have, we get uh, five dimensional churn Simons, yeah? And we get sums of uh, three logs, yeah, kind of find the dimensional situation. And then consider uh, uh, this function i, and we have f prime equal to zero, or we can con consider doubly critical points and here also doubly critical points. So doubly critical points kind of correspond to one to each to another, yeah? Uh, this will get flat connections on three dimensional manifolds and here we get, uh, uh, oh, uh, no, flat connections of five dimension manifolds and here we get um, mm, this linear combination of three logarithms. Uh, but when you consider not high critical points but ordinary critical points, uh, then there's a, a very interesting question because uh, when you consider in Chen Simon theory, as I told us, this equation means that f square equal to zero, square of, of um, curvature form as a four form matrix value for forms equal to zero. And it looks like, like uh, this equation should have discrete, maybe countable or infinite, I don't know, set of solutions, yeah? When you consider the equation for f prime equal to zero, we get some transcendental equations, not algebraic one, but determined, it should have some solution, can solve on computer with some precision, yeah? And um, uh, the, the, this is a big question, do these things correspond one to another? So, um, and consider the ordinary critical points of five dimensional chain sense, you get some countable, within various manifolds, you get some countable set of transcendental numbers. When you solve uh, the equation F squared to zero in differential geometry, and here you get some algebraic equations, some not algebraic equation, including dialogarithms. So in your previous talk, does it correspond to what? Uh, you have like three, one, zero, so. Uh, no, no, it's now five. Five and zero, yeah. Ah, okay. I mean, that's analog of five. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Five, five to zero, okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, so it's really interesting. Uh, you see this equation, F squared to zero, Nobody really uh, ever studied it, yeah, um, and um, mm. yes. Uh, yeah, of course, we can go to seven dimension, nine, and so on. Um, it will be similar situation, and I, I think that in, um, it looks at in, for example, if we do in seven dimensions, we consider some of four logarithms. There will be no intermediate. Uh, it will be highly unlikely that intermediate uh, object when you get not only. Uh, like in, in seven dimensions, you can write equations f equal to zero, f square equal to zero, f cube equal to zero as forms, yeah? So this mm. f cube equal to, f to zero, it will be equation for critical points. This first will be doubly critical point and f equal to zero will be triply critical point. I don't think that uh, if you go to like intermediate stage, there will be any solutions because it's already over determined system it will be. So it's highly unlikely that this story will have any uh, station, but who knows? Yeah, but uh, 
with the questions to identify these things. And maybe just last few words I want to say about this equation f squared equal to zero. It's already interesting. And it's Young Mills or what? No, no, it's not f times. It's it's a ah. it's a four four on five dimensional manifold. Mm -hmm. Interesting, e even in a billion case. Uh, when you have um, close to form is square equal to zero, so to probably relate to some foliation. Uh, so it's um, something um, already non trivial. And I want to say that even for a billion chance Simons, when I consider A, this will be just one form on your manifold. When I consider this uh, integral, yeah, of a dimensional manifold. Uh, Mm. It, it's not clear how to make pass integral. Uh, it's a big open question because, mm, of course, you can model out by gauge equivalence. Yeah. Uh, the, the trouble is the following: you um, uh, you get a function which you want to uh, usually in, in physics you do kind of Feynman expansion. You consider critical points. Yeah. So critical points will be d a square equal to zero, like zero, for example. Yeah, you have critical points, and then at critical points you make Taylor expansion your action functional. It will have quadratic part and some higher term part, but quadratic part is usually non-degenerate and maybe degenerate only in finitely many directions. But here there's no quadratic part at all. It's really cu cubic action, purely cubic action, and there is no analog of Mm, kind of mm, weak formula. Theory, yeah. yeah. What, 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 what it should do here? What is perturbation series? Nobody has any idea. Uh, it's kind of big open question. Physics version can make like U1 theory on this five dimensional manifolds. Mm. I think I can stop now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. And now uh, people who have questions they can unmute themselves and ask. Uh, Maxim, uh, talking about uh, local systems on threefolds, uh, uh, if uh, if threefold has lots of local systems, probably okay. But in general, it's only finitely many. Sure, probably, yeah. Probably you should go to something like DG space of local systems. No, or, no. Uh, no? Oh, 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 I can go to DG space. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, where is the space where the analogy should uh, should live? I mean, you you have you you get three. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I haven't thought about it carefully, but I think it's if you consider derived modulus stack, yeah, then to yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. So, so yes, the, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and 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 another direction which you mentioned, like you go to D bar direction, like holomorphic Chern Simon, yes, yes, yeah, yeah, which is problematic even in 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 3D, yes, but yes, what about higher? I mean. No problem. Uh, it's classical functional. That's not. It's not problematic. Yeah, no, 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 no. Quantum, of course. You, quantum. You, yeah, quantum. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. But still, either an analog of the statement, uh, the the critical values of higher. Dimension. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. Consider critical values of high chance action. Um, you'll you'll get you holomorphic bundles. Yes, yes, yes. But w what about this? Critical higher critical values. Higher critical values, so it should be again some maybe intermediate Jacobian. Uh, it will be something okay. I haven't thought about yet. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, more questions? Yeah, Maxim, it's Dan Fried. I have two questions. One, oh. if Dan Fried. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, Danny. Okay. Hi, how are you? Um, if we do the three dimensional Chern Simons on R2 cross a circle. Yeah. And we take your higher critical points. If I did it right, we don't get any. Is that right? Ah, because you consider R2 cross a circle. Uh, yeah, then I should consider doubly critical, doubly critical points. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no, I think it's really R2 times three dimensional. Okay. Yeah, but you still, I mean, if you just took the single critical points, you still have single a Single critical points, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is no, a but three, three But the three form exists on double critical points. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the point. Okay. 
And the second thing, do your closed forms, uh, they should have a refinement to different, they should have some integrality and so a refinement to different. Yeah, presumably, yeah, yeah, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, it's, anyhow, it's, it's very exotic objects, I haven't really thought about them. Carefully. But I don't know, uh, for example, then I think you, you thought about uh, quantization uh, of such i mean what what's how to make sense of the quantization if you don't yeah so quantization yeah yeah uh, I, I really don't know because it's um, um you now consider high critical point high critical points instead of usual critical points which are pretty exotic object anyhow yeah yeah that might be special Okay. So when you talk about Hamiltonian formalism, so you have symplectic form sometimes, and sometimes you have Poisson structure, and yeah. basically equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, what happens here from your perspective? I really have no idea. Okay. And maybe last question. So you were talking about gravity, and you said that uh, you get some model space. I didn't quite understand. Uh, ah, no, you, you can see the, you can see the compact space multiplied by a small interval in time direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can see the solution of of uh, Ricci curve which equal to zero or any gauge dimorphism or any things. And on these things, you get action of vector fields on this non-compact manifold. If, if you formally mod out by the section. Mm -hmm. And then on this quotient, you get will get to form. Yeah, this is how you is there any example interpretation example? I don't know how you think about this more classically. No, sir, what's classically? I mean, uh, in, in the gauge, uh, no, 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 for, uh, no, no, for example, in gravity, you can, for example, you can, um, if you do like in Minkowski uh, in Lorentz and signature, yeah. then, then the compact uh, one can use the choice of um. Mm -hmm. uh, the space like a resource should be something like, I don't know, like minimal, uh, minimal uh, hypersurface in, in, you consider germs of solution of Einstein equation along the minimal hypersurface, mm -hmm. then it will be, uh, this guy will have close to form. Mm -hmm. So we could try to make some kind of canonical choice of hypersurface, like minimal hypersurface and use some normal coordinates locally for example so you, you know like physicists in their paper they have kind of introduction and they have conclusion it means Conclu like oh, no, no, future I'm not a directions <laughs> i'm not a physicist i don't have any no 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 i mean uh, well, what what is uh, in what, what yeah, kind I, of I, don't, I don't know it's a really lousy talk i gave you so. no that's okay i mean yeah. i didn't find it all yeah mm -hmm. So it's kind no, of no, 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 no. Basically, extends to several unlawfully related things. Yeah, how to get this Noether theorem and then hmm. not really one topic, several topics. Okay, uh, more questions. There are almost fifty people left. Are there more questions, or should we? Just thank Maxim. Okay, if there are no more questions, then indeed let's thank Maxim. Okay. Very okay. stimulating talk. Thank you. Thank you. And so then this is the end of this meeting.